Welcome to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Welcome to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. Today's entry is titled, The Olympic Games and Public Protests. Once again, the Olympic Games are the center stage for racial issue protests. It actually began in the Mexico City Olympics in 1968 when Tommy Smith, who was the gold medal winner, and John Carlos, who received a bronze medal, made an international public statement about racial justice in the United States with their bowed heads, black socked feet without shoes to bring attention to black poverty, beads to protest lynchings, and raised black glove fists to represent their solidarity and support with black people and oppressed people around the world and the slow progress of racial equality. Peter Norman, the silver medalist from Australia, joined in the protest by wearing a badge for the Olympic Project for Human Rights. His solidarity with Smith and and Carlos ruined his career. When Norman died in 2006, Carlos and Smith, who had kept in touch with Norman for years, were pallbearers at his funeral in Australia. Racial issues were tense in 1968. Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated on April 4th of that year. Cities were set on fire. Bobby Kennedy, a champion of racial justice issues, was also assassinated. In 1963, he had reported to his brother that while progress was taking place, but difficult race problems remained, not only in the South, but throughout the country. But even the Kennedys could not quell the foment that was developing in poor black communities. The Kennedys were out of touch. It took King's assassination for Bobby Kennedy to understand. Several young black activists were not on board with the slow boat of progress being made. Jerome Smith, a young activist said, not only would young blacks like him fight to protect their rights at home, but they would refuse to fight for America in Cuba, Vietnam, or any other places that Kennedy saw threats Never, never, never. Muhammad Ali stated that he would not fight in a war against people who were not harming him, especially while racial injustice was taking place in the United States. Ali lost four years of his boxing career because he refused to be drafted. He paid a heavy price on principle. Gwen Berry, the latest Olympic Games protester, who was the bronze medalist at the Olympic trials in the hammer throw, received fierce backlash after she appeared to turn her back to the American flag as the national anthem was being played at the U.S. Olympic trials. That was bad enough, but some of her other actions and rhetoric are more disturbing. Toward the end of the song, she put a black t-shirt with the words, Activist Athlete, on her head. She claimed she was set up because the national anthem had started to play when the three hammer thrower medalists were on the award stand. But USA track and field spokeswoman Susan Hazard said in a statement that the anthem was scheduled to play at 5.20 p.m. that Saturday and that the schedule had been posted. I suspect most people don't have a problem with people protesting for anything they want. It's the American way. But it's rude to do so when you are invited to a sporting event to represent the United States in the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. If the United States is that bad, why participate? Why not convince all the African-American athletes to boycott the trials and the games? Now that would be a protest, but it would have failed. Barry claimed that the national anthem is racist because of this line in the third stanza. No refuge could save the hireling and slave. There's a great deal of debate about what Francis Scott Key meant using the words hireling and slave. Key was a mixed bag when it came to slavery. Francis Scott Key purchased his first slave in 1800 or 1801 and owned six slaves in 1820. He freed seven slaves in the 1830s, one of whom continued to work for him for wages as his farm's foreman, supervising several other slaves. Key also represented several slaves seeking their freedom as well as several slave owners seeking return of their runaway slaves. Key was one of the executors of John Randolph of of Roanoke's will, which freed his 400 slaves, and Key fought to enforce the will for the next decade to provide the free slaves with land to support themselves. Key is known to have publicly criticized slavery's cruelties, and a newspaper editorial stated that 
He often volunteered to defend the downtrodden sons and daughters of Africa. The editor said that Key convinced me that slavery was wrong, radically wrong. If you watched any of the track and field trials, you might have noticed something. The vast number of black athletes competing, earning spots on the Olympic team, and winning their events. Almost every sprinting event was won by a black man or woman. In fact, most of the runners in each of the sprints, from 100 meters to 400 meters, were black. A black woman broke the world record in the 400-meter hurdles. The long jump and triple jump were won by black athletes. The same is true for the high jump and the men's decathlon. Of course, these advancements do not mean that there is no longer any injustice, prejudice, and bigotry in the United States. But it does show there has been some form of progress since the the time four-time Olympic gold uh, medal winner Jesse uh, Owens was snubbed after his return home after the 1936 Olympics. Mac Robinson, the older brother of Jackie Robinson, was second to Owens in the 200 meters. Neither Owens nor the other black athletes were able to capitalize on their achievements like today's athletes. Consider the following about Mac Robinson. If anybody in Pasadena was proud for me other than my family and close friends, he once said, they never showed it. The only time I was noticed was when somebody asked me during an assembly at school if I'd race against a horse. Robinson was reduced to pushing a broom, sweeping downtown streets while wearing his Olympic sweatshirt with a big USA on the front, unable to afford new clothes. Racial conflict cost him that job, too. When a judge ordered the desegregation of public swimming pools in Pasadena, the city retaliated by firing all its black workers, including Robinson. Today's black athletes do very well financially because of their athletic achievements. This is true in almost every sport. Many of them have branched out into financial enterprises beyond sports. The Spectator's response to uh, Simone Biles in the gymnastics trials was heartwarming. Many people are disturbed with the hijacking of sporting events for political statements, everything from protesting the flag and the national anthem to the promotion of LGBTQI pride propaganda that gets a solid month while Independence Day gets one day. It's everywhere. Here's the latest from the NFL. Football is lesbian. Football is beautiful. Football is queer. Football is life. Football is exciting. Football is culture. Football is transgender. Football is queer. Football is heart. Football is power. Football is tough. Football is bisexual. Football is strong. Football is freedom. Football is American. Football is accepting. Football is everything. Football is for everyone. I doubt that these protests help. Most people of goodwill have been persuaded that racial injustice exists and that early statements about Black Lives Matters were embraced. But those goodwill efforts were hijacked by radical political purposes. It's gotten so bad that being white is by definition racist. A psychiatrist told a Yale School of Medicine audience that she fantasized about killing white people. So many things are racist now, from grammar and math to black holes and the names of birds. Our nation is more divided on race when it comes to politics, special interest groups, many of which are in it for the money, for example, education, entertainment, and the enabling news media than it has ever been. I don't believe that was the intent of Tommy Smith and John Carlos when they stood on the medal stand at the 1968 Olympics. Thank you for listening to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. For more from Gary and American Vision, check out the American Vision Collection in the Canon app.